personal finance practice problem using Excel. Tax equivalent yield. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet if you do have access. Three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example tab, in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. Information on the left, calculations on the right. We're calculating the tax equivalent yield. Useful because taxes complicate things all the time. And if we're comparing investments, for example, bonds, which have a tax benefit on the one hand versus bonds that do not have a tax benefit, we would like to be calculating the tax equivalent yield so we can be comparing like to like apples to apples as they say. The second tab is going to have some pre-formatted cells on the right so you could focus in on the tax equivalent yield calculation and less on the formatting in Excel. The third tab we're basically going to build from a blank sheet only having the data on the left hand side. If you don't have the data on the left hand side you can open a blank sheet and just add it. I would first select the entire worksheet if it were a blank sheet. Right click on it, lay down my baseline formatting which would go down to format cells. I usually start with the currency bracketed numbers the symbol a uh, zero a uh, none for the dollar sign and no decimals I'm not gonna hit OK here because I already have this I'm gonna X out up top then add your data convert to percents as needed for this cell and this cell with the percent item here make a skinny C column and then you're ready to roll and that's where we will roll here we're rolling now so we've got the marginal tax rate now when we talk about the tax rate and investments taxes are confusing in terms of the u.s taxes united states taxes and our income tax is what we're focusing in on here because we have a progressive tax system meaning we don't have the same rate for all levels of of our income it goes higher and so later dollars we can assume uh has a higher tax rate so we have two tax rates you can kind of consider for estimates an average tax rate and a marginal tax rate the marginal tax rate is our highest tax bracket. The average tax rate is kind of the average of what we're paying on average. The reason we use the marginal tax rate is because the next decision we make from an economic standpoint, when we make a decision on the, mark, on the margin from this point forward, it's gonna have an impact on our last tax dollars at the margin, the marginal rate. So we're gonna use our highest rate in essence. And of course, you can imagine that the highest rate will be higher for higher earners. And therefore, you're gonna, you would imagine that people that are more well off have bigger earnings or more earnings would get more benefit from investing, for example, in investments that have tax benefits uh, in that case. So we have the uh, municipal bond. So we're gonna assume we have a bond here that has a 5% uh, yield on the bond. Now that's going to be a municipal bond, so we're going to assume that it's not going to be subject to tax. If I was to compare it then to other bonds like corporate bonds, which are subject to tax, then what, what would be the tax equivalent yield be? Calculation formula will be down here. we got the tax equivalent yield, the tax-free uh, tax bond yield divided by 1 minus the tax rate. So once we do the tax equivalent yield, you can also solve for the tax-free bond yield going basically the other way if you so choose by basically solving for the tax-free bond yield if you so choose using your algebra. So, and you can also, of course, figure that out. And the easiest way to kind of figure that out, figure that formula is to use an example. Assume the bond is $1,000 and then you can kind of uh, make some scenarios, which we will also do shortly. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the title. It's going to be the taxable equivalent yield. Now you can do this in terms of a formula. Just write down the formula and write it out. I'm going to make the formula into a table. I think this is a useful tool to do to visualize things in a table format. It's also useful to take a formula and be able to put it into a table so that you can make basically worksheets for yourself and possibly for others to simplify the process. So I'm gonna widen the cell out a bit. I'm gonna widen it from D all the way over here. I'm gonna make these three cells up top, our, our headers, which I'm gonna to go to the home tab, font group, we're gonna to go to the bucket dropdown, making that black and white, black and white. That's what we do with our headers. So we're gonna say, okay, we start off with our formula, uh, the tax-free bond yield. So I'm gonna pick up the tax-free bond yield. I'll call it the tax free bond yield 
and that's I'm going to put this in the outer column because I'm going to have a subcategory of this this numerator. And so I'm going to put this in the outer column and I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the 5%. That's for the tax-free bond and the municipal bonds that we don't have to pay taxes on. We're talking about the interest that we don't have to pay the interest. You know, the interest is earnings. So we're going to then say which would be taxable typically for income taxes because it's income but we might get a tax break because it's a municipal bond. So we go to the numbers. I'm gonna make that a percent, percentifying it so we can recognize it. And then I'm gonna say, now we're gonna do the bottom, which is gonna be one minus the marginal rate. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be one. I'm just gonna type in what I'm gonna do, minus the marginal tax rate. I'm gonna put a colon, because I'm gonna put this in the inner column. I'm just gonna take one as the numerator. I'm just gonna type in one and then the marginal which i can just pull this from my data this equals the marginal tax rate our highest tax bracket that we're paying for uh, income taxes 30 percent you might be considering whether or not you get the tax benefit for the fed and the state possibly depending on your state circumstances and whether or not it be taxable there so take that into consideration home tab number group percentifying it font group going to underline it and so that's going to be then I'm going to copy my my thing up top here. I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to double click on it and delete the colon. And then I'm going to indent it. So this is me doing this indentation to show this inner column calculation. I'm going to go up top home tab alignment indent. I'm going to indent it one more time. So that's the sub calculation for the denominator, which I'm now going to pull to the outside, which is going to be equal to one or 100% minus the tax rate top tax rate 30 percent equals we got to we got to put percentify it to recognize it home tab you want to recognize number then percentify and then i'm going to go to the font group and underline it and so that's going to give us then what we're looking for we're going to find the exact thing that we set out to look for which is good so then we're going to have this. So, so now this is going to be equal to, and this is the numerator up top, the 5% divided by the denominator, according to our formula. And again, I can't recognize it. Why? Because you've got to percentify home tab number percentify. I'm going to add some decimals to get it a little bit more precise. Two decimals out. It could go more out, but I'm going to take it two decimals out. That's all the, that's all the uh, specificity that I need. That's we don't need to be more specific than that but notice that number does represent a longer decibel because it's excel and that's how excel works let's make this blue in brackets we're going to go to the home tab font group let's hit the drop down on the bucket here i'm going to make it that blue if you don't have it you can go to the more colors standard tab that that blue right there that's the one we're using we're going to say okay doke you could just say okay if you want i added a doke just to just to add a little more spice to it instead of just okay i put a doke on it and then i'm going to select these two and let's make this a little skinnier let's skinnerize those thin them up thin them up okay so now we could check that let's put a check on that let's just assume that we had a one thousand dollar investment and see if this makes sense it's a little abstract when we're just looking at percentages we're going to say okay what does that mean well that means if i had a tax-free bond yield of five percent i would need an equivalent taxable yield for like corporate bonds of 7.15 to get the same tax same benefit from the bonds because the one has a tax advantage and the other doesn't well what does that mean let's do it let's like let's try to think about it this way let's put a skinny column to g i'm going to go to the home tab uh let's put a paint brushy to make a skinny G column like the C column. We're gonna copy the paint with the paintbrush. This is gonna be our check figure. I'm gonna select three cells up top, putting that into our header formatting, home tab, font group, drop down, black and white header formatting. And this is gonna be, let's, let's kind of check this. We'll start with our earnings before taxes and put a colon there. And so let's assume we have an investment and the standard investment in bonds, I'm gonna make this cell a little wider, is $1,000. So we'll just say like a $1,000 investment that we put in place. And then we're gonna say tax equivalent yield. So the tax equivalent yield, we just calculated here. I'm gonna pull it in. I'm gonna say equals, and notice if you, do, if you just type 7.14%, uh, 
then it won't be exact because this one's actually using the actual number uh, so just be aware of that it's not really even though it says 7.14 we saw that it's actually longer than that in other words you can't see it now a bit but it's more in any case you know what I'm talking about I hope so we're gonna go to the home tab a number group and percentify that let's add a couple decimals this is what I mean if I go more than two decimals out it's really looking like that number but we round it to two decimals uh, there in in appearance only because it's actually the big number or the one with more than two decimals okay earnings before taxes then I'm gonna put two or a space so it's not a colon outer column now multiplying this out that means we would have the 1000 times the 7.14 now we're gonna assume this one is taxable so there's gonna be a tax consequence here right I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, this one I'm gonna add some decimals so it's 71.43 percent so if I had a thousand dollar investment then I'd have um, I'd, I'd earn the the 7143 but then I'd have to pay the government on it because they want some of that money because I didn't invest in their bonds so so then they're saying well we want some of that money and so now we're going to multiply that i'm just going to say equals times our tax rate which is the highest tax rate not the average tax rate the marginal tax rate because this is all happening at the margin as economists say at the next step the next thing that's happening from this point forward i need to recognize it so let's go it's a percent so we got to percentify if we want to recognize and then this is going to be the tax then so we're going to have tax consequences 7143 times the 30 so we're gonna have to pay 21 let's add some decimals like 2143 in taxes so what are my earnings then after taxes earnings after taxes means it's going to be equal to what i earned before 7143 but then i got to pay the government 30 percent of it are you kidding me are you kidding me let's add some decimal i think that's even and so there we go it's just absurd 30 percent what is going on around here and then i'm going to say if i compare that to the original investment of the thousand let's put an underline here home tab font group and underline that's going to give us our um, mu municipal bond yield uh, which is our basic let's say it's going to be our tax-free bond yield which is going to be equal to the 50 over the thousand making that a percent uh, percentifying it uh, and there's our five percent five even so there's our five percent here so if you actually use you know an investment typical number make up a number 100 but a thousand is often the case when you're thinking about units of bonds then you can it, it, that's a way that you can play with these numbers and make these abstract percentages percents make more sense uh, and kind of prove to yourself that uh, what is going on here so hopefully that does that so let's go let's do some indentations so i'm going to select these i'm going to go to the home tab alignment let's indent and let's indent this one again home tab alignment indent okay so now and let's make it blue and bordered let's make it blue and bordered while we're at it don't stop now because we're at it and while we're at stuff let's let's finish let's do some other stuff while we're while we're at it i'm going to make this blue and then bordered let's make it a little skinnier from i and j they can be a little skinnier okay that's enough i don't care if we're at it we got to be at something new now i'm at something new so now let's make another one let's say well now i could solve for the tax bond yield so we can say well what if i go the other way and i'm saying i know the tax-free bond yield and I want to get to the tax free, and I want to get to, I'm sorry, I want to know the tax free bond yield uh, because I have the tax equivalent yield. So let's go back up top and say, let's imagine that's our situation. I need to make a skinny K. Let's make a skinny K, home tab and paint brushy. And then we just put that there and it makes it skinny automatically. It's, a, it's magic. This paintbrush is like a magic paintbrush. So this is going to be tax-free bond yield calculation. I'll make this a little bit wider over here. 
and it's going to be three columns again so i'll put three columns to do our black and white home tab font group drop down black and white and so this is i'm going to start with our tax equivalent let's just say this is going to be uh equal to the tax equivalent uh yield which is this one we calculated so i'm going to start with the tax equivalent saying we know that we know what the tax equivalent yield is on like the corporate bonds the ones that are subject to tax and then i'm comparing it to the municipal bonds or the ones that don't have the tax i can't recognize i can't recognize that's okay you just got to percentize number group percent and then let's add some decimals okay then we're going to do our i'm just going to copy the same one minus the same thing right here one minus the tax rate so i'm just going to equals equals i'm going to copy that down two more cells and it'll just copy that down put my cursor on the format or, or the fill handle and just copy that down like right there so there it is and then i'm going to say this is going to be one the marginal rate is equal to that's our highest tax bracket rate again this 30 percent we need to recognize so we're going to percentize home tab font group percentize underline it while we're while we're at it don't get into that again while we're at it and you just do all this crazy stuff we don't got we don't have all day while we're at it one minus the 30 percent is going to be home tab and then number group percentifies that one so 70 percent let's put an underline here and that's going to give us our tax free bond yield and so this is going to be equal to this is going to be this times this and let's make that a percent and then add some decimals so now we get to that five percent right so now we started here and we got to the five percent and you can basically you know use your algebra to re-algebraic uh whichever one you're looking for whether you have the tax three bond yield or the tax equivalent bond yield to kind of figure that but still either way it's a little bit abstract when you're just looking at the percents and either way it's useful to assume that you have a thousand dollar bond and kind of prove it to yourself by taking into consideration what you're going to earn on it in either situation as well as any tax consequences if there are any let's make this blue and bordered let's make it blue and bordered while we're at it oh here we go again while we're at it you just tack things on all day it's like job creep you i started with one task and now you've got me working here like into the wee hours of the morning i'm gonna make this one a little bit skinnier make that one a little bit skinnier and then let's go to the let's check our spelling spell check perfect check the spelling yield yield i know how to spell the yield i just my fingers just got mixed up that was it's not my spelling it wasn't my spelling's fault and then i'm going to indent here we're going to go to the alignment and indent and let's indent this one again to make it look nice while we're at it oh my gosh okay i think that looks good 